What is up, YouTube? Today, we're going to be talking about Open EMR. Open EMR is an online demo, but a real working copy of electronic health records that is used all over the world. So many organizations and doctors use this information or this platform to enter their patient data. Now, if you hang in there, I'm going to tell you how you can get this software and practice along with me. If you look down in the comment section, I will have a pinned comment of this actual software where you can log in and practice the same steps with me. This is how you're going to learn a skill and work from home using electronic medical records. Now, keep in mind, all EMR, all electronic medical records are different, but they all should have the same capabilities if they're a certified copy of records. So all records also have to be kept private by HIPAA standards. And HIPAA is keeping that patient information private, like their name and date of birth, so that it cannot be used by anyone else for fraudulent reasons. So we're going to be talking about that also later. I will be doing a class online in HIPAA so that you can get a free HIPAA certificate and you'll be able to become HIPAA certified along with having these practice skills in EMR. EMR again stands for Electronic Medical Records, and today we are going to talk about attaching records to a patient's chart when they make a medical records request or when documents need to be uploaded for the doctor so that he can review them in the patient's medical record. So I'm going to log in with Open EMR first, and the first thing you see is a scheduler here. You see a calendar to the left where we could potentially schedule. But we're not talking about scheduling in medical records. If you want to see my scheduling video, check it out in the comments. I will also place it in the description so you can look at our scheduling video and how to schedule using EMR. So now we're going to go and we need to attach records to a patient's chart. In order for that to happen, our patient needs to be in the database. So if it is a patient that is already in there, we're going to go to patient and down to new slash search. And when we do that, if we want to search a patient, we're actually going to scroll down to the bottom. Do you see where it says search? If we were entering new patient information, we would then click, click create new patient. And then we would enter the patient's information or demographics. That's what we call the first name, last name, date of birth, sex, age, social security number, address, and any identifying information. So this information here can be entered for a new patient and the new patient can then have records attached. More often than not, it's patients that are already in our system. So we scroll down to the bottom and we select search. And this is the window where we could search our current patients that are in the system that need maybe further information in their medical chart, or it's just that they were a recent patient and you see their information here in the queue. So we're going to select one of these patients. I'm going to select Donna Fisher and this would be Donna Fisher's chart. So if we go into billing, there's not much information in here as far as billing. So EMR can be used for billing. And we saw earlier, it can be used for scheduling. Today, we're going to be using it to attach records to the patient chart.
If you look here on the right hand side for our patient, we have the patient portal and the patient portal is where the patient can have access to certain records that are uploaded. So if test results are needed, this could be entered here. Now remember, most of our patients will be filling out a request for information if they want the information to re be released to another provider. This is information that we're attaching solely for the patient to view so the patient can be up to date on their test results, any images, et cetera. And it allows the patient to kind of look over documents even before they go to the doctor to talk about their test results. So if you look over here on the right-hand side of the portal, they have assigned documents. So we have patient portal and over to the right, assigned documents. So if I click assign documents, I can actually assign a document or upload a document to the patient's information portal. So if you followed along with me and you've downloaded those documents already to your computer, you should have the patient documents downloaded that you can attach to the patient's chart. So I'm gonna select upload and I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to go to my downloads and go to my documents that I'm looking to attach. So what I'm looking for is patient documentation that I need to attach or patient test results. As you can see here, there is an x-ray, there's a chest x-ray, and there's some other documents in here like notice of privacy practice, patient history, release of information. So you could be potentially adding either a test result or a consent form, or a release of information form to the patient's portal or to their electronic medical record. So today we're going to attach the patient's test result for their neck x-ray. When you look in the beginning, you'll see that there are some numbers here, numbers 38FC, 2FC. A lot of times documents are filed by patient record number. So we will look that record number up and match the information on the patient's record to their name. So that's what we're doing right now. We're attaching one of those records. So I am attaching the neck x-ray. And you see here the file name says x-ray of the neck. I'm going to open that file and I'm going to upload that file to my patient's record. Once I do that, then I'm going to take a look to see in my patient's portal if there is a signature on file or if they need to sign any documents stating that they've received it. And here, the signature on file should be filled in. If not, there should be a section where you can send an email to the patient, have them sign it, and they can save and sign. And then you'll be able to enter their information and upload and release any information they've requested. Once we've realized that our patient's signature is there and they have logged into our portal, we can then look up any documents that were uploaded into their record. So if we go into template repository that looks like a little eyeball, you click on there and we scroll through to see any documents that were uploaded. And as we see, our patient has a HIPAA form uploaded, they have insurance information, a medical history form, notice of a privacy document, and take a look, the x-ray that I have attached to the record. Now, just to be sure, if we click on this particular document, the document should open up to the patient to where they can see a copy of it. So I'm going to open it right now. Uh, 
Alrighty, as you can see here, that x-ray of the neck does appear as a digital attachment to our patient's chart. So we know that that information is there. So looking at our patient's information here, there are all sorts of documents you can attach, consent forms, insurance forms, uh, notice of privacy practice forms. These are all different types of non-clinical forms and clinical forms. Our non-clinical forms are legal documents like our HIPAA form, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act form. Our privacy document or our NPP that tells us about the privacy laws that we have to follow our insurance information, that is financial information, and our x-ray that we've uploaded, which is clinical information. So let's do one more and upload another document. We are going to select the upload button for our document so we can grab another document in here. And we're going to choose a file. This time we are going to upload a, let's say a test result or maybe a medication record. Let's do like a medication record. Okay, so I'm scrolling down here just to find a really good uh, medication record or that I want to attach to my patients documentation. And as you see here, we've got notice of privacy practice. We have consent forms, all sorts of forms that you could use to attach to your patient's record. I want to give you an example of a test result. Okay, let's do a CBC test result. That is laboratory work or blood work type of document. I'm going to upload that document now. And then I'm going to take a look to make sure that my document is here. My CBC test results are here. And we can either say general or leave it blank. Many places will actually have this drop down box that will say financial document, legal document or clinical lab work or test result. So keep in mind that your location may have you select a certain category that your document will go into. So we're going to click on this test result and we're going to open it up and see what this test result looks like that we have attached. So the test result that you see here is all of our blood work. Here are our results. These are the numbers that they've gotten from the blood work and the patient can actually see them, what their particular levels are. Over here, we can see what the normal levels are. Once we enter this into EHR, a lot of times it will automatically give us what the highs and lows are of this test result. So as you see, all sorts of documents can be attached to your patient's record so that your patient can have a copy or access to their information. In order for them to have the information, you would need to attach it to their portal and their record for them. Hopefully you've learned a lot today about the open EMR, how to attach a document to a patient's chart and how that would actually help our patient in gaining access to those records that they could see. Hopefully you've enjoyed this demonstration of open EMR electronic medical records so you can learn a skill and work from home. My name is Carla at Carla's Career and Shortcuts. Hopefully you've learned a lot today. Be sure to look down in the comments and the description to check out this website and the access so that you can practice open EMR and attaching the documents to a patient's chart in the portal. 
Hopefully you've learned a lot. If so, please like and subscribe. Take care, everyone.